One of the most important skills vital to your survival in this course is factoring. Section 2.1.4 will review factoring trinomials. Now you may be very proficient at factoring. If so, you're ready to go and start solving equations. If you're not so proficient or it's been a while, then I strongly encourage you to spend lots of time practicing and mastering this skill, working extra problems for practice and getting help when you need it. In this section, we're gonna talk about looking at patterns that we can derive from the FOIL process, reversing that FOIL process to factor. So let's quickly review our FOIL process. If I want to multiply two binomials together, x plus 2 times x minus 5, remember we apply the FOIL process. So we multiply the first two terms together to get x squared. Then we multiply our outside terms to get negative 5x. We multiply our inside terms to get plus 2x. And we multiply our last terms to get negative 10. In general, when we do the FOIL process, we have an extra step of combining middle terms. We hit, get here negative 3x minus 10. That process is called FOIL. When we factor, we're going to start with a trinomial like this and determine what were the two original factors. So I'm going to show you a table here of all of the different patterns that you might run into and how to think about factoring these trinomials. So I'm going to make a big table. We'll start with the pattern of the trinomial. Whoops. Then we're going to talk about looking at the last sign in the trinomial, what information that gives us. Then we'll talk about looking at the first sign and what information that gives us. And we'll use that to figure out our binomial factors. So starting with the possibility of two positives, we're going to be looking at trinomials that have the form x squared plus bx plus c. Notice our leading coefficient, or the coefficient of x squared, is 1. We're going to start with that case first. So in this case, we have x squared plus bx plus c. And we want to figure out what are the factors, specifically what are the signs of the factors that would produce this trinomial? So let me actually get our factor set up over here. We know it's going to be the product of two binomials just on experience with FOIL. And in the first two spots, we'll have an x and an x, right? Because x times x produces that first term x squared. Now, we also know that in the second two spots, we're going to have some sort of number there. Those two numbers are going to multiply to give us that last term, which in this case is c. So the goal of this table is to learn how to figure out what are the signs of our binomial factors. So I'm going to begin by looking at this sign right here. We know that c is the result of the very last step of our FOIL process. When we multiply the last two numbers together, we end up with c. Now in this case, because c is positive, then those two numbers in our factors could either both be positive or both be negative, right? Because a positive times a positive would give us a positive, or a negative times a negative would give us a negative. So I'm going to write a note here, SSS, okay? What that means is same sign sum. So by looking at this last sign, and observing that it is positive, we know that the signs in our binomial factors are either both positive or both negative. They're going to be the same sign. I'll tell you what the word sum means here in a little bit. So our first decision is that the signs in our binomial factors are going to match. Next, let's look at this sign. Now, this middle term, bx, is the result 
of combining our outside and inside terms from the FOIL process. Remember in our example up here, the outside and inside terms combine together to give us this middle term. Now, when I add two numbers together of the same sign and the result is positive, then the two original numbers must have both been positive. So that first sign makes our choice. Both signs in our binomial factors are going to be positive. So I can now come over here and discover the sign pattern in my binomial factors is x plus a number times x plus a number. Okay, now we're going to do this several times over. I know that was very detailed, but stick with me. Keep listening. The pattern will sink in as we practice. Let's look at another example. x squared minus bx plus c. So we know, and again, this is a b, not a 6, to keep it in general, okay? We know that when we factor this, it's going to break down into two binomials, and the first two spots are going to have an x, because x times x is x squared, and then we're going to have some sort of numbers out here. Okay, so that's our pattern. Our goal is to figure out what the signs are. We're going to use the same process that we did a minute ago. I'm going to start by looking at this sign. And I'm going to recognize that this number C is the result of the product of my last two terms, right? We're kind of working FOIL out of order. We're working from the end back to the beginning. So when we multiply our last two terms together, it gives us the last term in our trinomial. Well, we're observing this is a positive number. So that tells me that these two numbers have to have the same sign, right? If they're both positive, then C would be positive. If they're both negative, then C would be negative. So I'm going to make the same conclusion here, SSS, which means same sign sum. So what I know at this point is that the signs of my binomial factors are either both positive or both negative. And again, I'll explain what this sum means when we start doing some examples. But I know they're going to be the same sign. The way that I'm going to determine which sign they are is by looking at this sign. Now remember, this middle term is the combination of our outside and inside terms. If I add my outside and inside terms together, which I know have the same sign, and the result is negative, then that tells me that those two numbers must have both been negative. So I can come over here and say the pattern of signs in my binomial factors is that they are both negative. Okay, now we have two more possible sign patterns to figure out, so let's keep thinking with this same process. Another possible trinomial that I might run, run into would be x squared plus bx minus c. So it's going to break down into two binomial factors, each of which will have x as the first term and some sort of number in that last spot. Now, here in a minute, we'll do some specific examples and we'll actually have some numbers there. So working with the last sign, I'm gonna look at this one first. It's negative, and we know that C is the product of our last two terms in the FOIL process, right? Now, if I multiply two numbers together and the result is negative, well, how do we get a negative product? it's because each of those numbers have different signs, right? A positive times a negative is a negative, or a negative times a positive is a negative. So at this point, we can already figure out our two binomial factors. I'm gonna write DSD for different sign difference. Just an easy way to remember these patterns. So I already know at this point that my two signs are going to be different. One's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. Now, how did I figure that out? Because when I multiply a positive times a negative, the result is negative. Okay? So what is that first sign going to tell us? It still gives us important information. Remember up here in our example, when we combine our outside and inside terms, if the result is positive and those two numbers have different signs, that tells me that the biggest number 
must be positive. So I know when I figure out these numbers here in a minute, the biggest one has to go with the positive sign, okay? The last possible sign pattern that you could run into would be x squared minus bx minus c. It's still going to factor into two binomials with an x in the first two spots and a number in the second two spots. Our goal at this point is just to figure out signs. Here in a minute when we do examples, we'll talk about how do we find those numbers. So following this same process, I'm going to look at this one first. And remember that C is the product of our last two numbers. Well, if I multiply those two numbers together and I get a negative, that tells me those two numbers must have had different signs because a positive times a negative is a negative. So I'm going to use this uh, way of remembering what to do, DSD, different sign difference. So I already know early on that my signs are going to be different. One's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. The information that we get out of that first sign then comes from thinking about our middle terms. If we add two middle, middle terms together and the result is negative, then the biggest one must have been negative. So I'm going to put a circle on that one, remembering that one's going to be negative. Now try to see the big pattern here. Notice the first two were similar because we had same sign sum as our decision in those cases. Whenever this second number is positive, we're going to make that conclusion same sign sum. So we know that either both signs are going to be positive or both are going to be negative. Then the first sign tells us which one it's going to be, right? So those are similar cases. These are also similar cases. Whenever I look at this number being negative, I'm going to make the conclusion that our binomial factors must have different signs. So I'm already deciding early the signs are going to be different. Then this first sign tells me the sign of the biggest number. All right, I know that's a lot to think about. This is going to take some practice, and the more you practice, the easier it's going to get. So let's apply this to some examples. Example four, factor completely. So in this case, we have example A, x squared minus 9x plus 14. This is going to break down into two binomial factors. In the first two spots, we're going to have an x because we know x times x gives us x squared. Now, let's figure out our signs. To figure out our signs, we need to look at that second sign first. So I'm going to look at this sign right here. Now remember, 14 is going to be the product of our last two spots. If we multiply those two numbers and get a positive, then we know those two numbers must have the same sign. So I'm going to write SSS right there. So we know we're going to have either x plus a number times x plus a number or x minus a number times x minus a number. To make that decision, we're going to look at that first sign right here and we observe that it's negative. Remember, that tells me that they are both going to be negative. So I can go ahead and write in my signs, they're both going to be negative. Now, once I've decided what my signs are going to be, then the only thing I have left is to figure out what are those numbers going to be. We know that these two numbers have to multiply to give us 14. And when we combine our outside and inside terms, that has to give us our middle term, which is negative 9x, okay? So we need, I'm going to write this down, we need two factors of 14 with a, here comes the sum part, sum of 9. Now we've already decided our signs, they're both negative, so I'm just thinking about factors here. Two factors of 14 with a sum of 9. Well, factors of 14, pairs of factors, 1 and 14, and 2 and 7. I need to choose the pair with a sum of 9, so that would be 2 and 7. Since both of our signs are the same, we can put those in either order. Okay, so our factorization then is x minus 2 
times x minus 7. But I'm not going to move on to the next problem until I check my work. Every single time you factor, pause, foil it out, and make sure that it's factored correctly. So when we foil, we have x times x, the product of our first two terms. That gives us x squared. The product of our outside terms, x times negative 7, is negative 7x. Multiplying our inside terms, we have negative 2x. And multiplying our last terms, we end up with plus 14. When we combine middle terms, we have x squared minus 9x plus 14, which matches the original problem. And that leads us to conclude that our factorization is correct. So only at that point am I going to say, yep, I am confident that that is the answer. Okay? So factor it out. Then immediately FOIL it out. Be diligent to check it. Um, and practice this a lot. Example B, x squared minus 4x minus 21. We know this is going to break down into two binomial factors. In the first two spots, we're going to have an x. Following our process of watching these sign patterns, I'm going to look at this one first. Remembering that negative 21 is the product of the last two terms from our FOIL process, and observing that it's negative, a negative product comes from two numbers that have different signs. So I'm going to make a note, different sign difference. So already I know one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. Now remember from our analysis above, if we have the case different sign difference, this one is going to tell me that the biggest one is going to be negative. So I know my biggest number is going to go right here. So now we're ready to figure out our numbers. And we need factors of 21 with a difference of our middle term 4. So if we think about pairs of factors of 21, we have 1 and 21, and we have 3 and 7. We need the pair that has a difference of 4. So we'll be using 3 and 7. Now remember, we've decided the biggest number has to be negative, so we have to put the 7 here and the 3 here. Now before we move on, let's check it with FOIL. The product of our first, term, first two terms, x times x, is x squared. Outside terms, we get minus 7x. Inside terms, we get 3x. And last, we get 21. So combining middle terms, we have x squared minus 4x minus 21, which is the same as the original trinomial that we started with. So if you're working a test or homework, you can check your factorization every single time by FOIL. Keep in mind, we're just doing a few examples here, um, and I strongly recommend you practice this a bunch. Now, what's different about examples C and D? Do you notice? They both have a leading coefficient that's not 1. This changes our factoring process quite a bit. Now, we're going to work example D first because it's going to be a bit of a different technique. Notice in example D that all of our coefficients are divisible by 3, and specifically they're divisible by negative 3. So what we're going to do to begin factoring this one is a technique called factoring out the GCF. Our greatest common factor, or the biggest number that will evenly divide all three of those coefficients, is 3 but I'm going to factor out negative 3, okay? So we're going to move our greatest common factor to the left, and we're going to divide all three of those terms by negative 3. Notice if I take negative 3x squared and divide by negative 3, that gives me x squared. Or I can think negative 3 times x squared gives me negative 3x squared, right? Negative 3 times what term? would give me my middle term negative 9x. That would be plus 3x, right? And finally, negative 3 times negative 10 would give me 30. So this is a process called factoring out the GCF. I'm dividing each of those terms by negative 3 to obtain these new terms in my trinomial here. I can check this one by distributing the negative 3 
negative 3 times x squared gives me negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times 3x gives me negative 9x. And negative 3 times negative 10 gives me negative 30. So we have correctly factored out the greatest common factor. Now the result inside here is a basic trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. So we can apply our ordinary factoring process on this one. So I'm going to factor out the negative 3. I'm going to keep that over there to the left. I don't want to lose it. And then I'm going to break this down into two binomial factors. In the first two spots of those factors, we're definitely going to need an x. Now let's look at the last term. Since it's negative, we know that the signs in our binomial factors have to be different. So we can already decide one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. Then we look at that first sign to determine the biggest one is going to be positive. So when I figure out my numbers, I'm going to put the biggest one there. Now, we need two factors of 10 with a difference of 3, right? Think about the factors of 10. We need the pair that has a difference of 3. That would be 2 and 5. 5 is the biggest number, so it's going to go with the positive and we have a 2 over here. Now let's be careful to, or diligent, to check our answer when we foil this spot right here. Keeping our negative 3 out here, the first two terms have a product of x squared. Outside is minus 2x. Inside is plus 5x. And last is negative 10. When we combine like terms in the middle, we get the correct middle term plus 3x. If we redistribute our negative 3 in front, we have negative 3x squared minus 9x plus 30. So we have correctly factored the problem. Keep in mind that red ink part is the check step. My goal was to factor it, and there is the factorization right there. Let's finish up this section with one last challenging problem. In example C, we have a leading coefficient of 3 again. But notice, unlike example D, all three of those terms are not divisible by 3. So we do not have a greatest common factor that we could extract. What that means is we're going to have to factor this directly into two binomial factors. So I'm going to set up my factors. And we know when we multiply our first two terms together, we're going to get 3x squared. So I can't just put an x in each spot. I'm going to need 3x times x. Okay. Now we can determine our signs. Notice this one is positive. That tells me the signs in my binomial factors have to be the same. And this one identifies them both to be positive. So we know we're going to have a plus in each of those two spots. Now the hard part about this one is figuring out these last two numbers. We know they have to multiply to give us 8. However, when I multiply my outside and inside terms together, this factor right here is going to affect that outside product. So my suggestion in a case like this is to use the trial and error process. As you use trial and error, you're going to take a pair of factors of 8, plug them into your binomials, and foil it out and see if you factored it right. If you didn't get it right, try a new combination of factors of 8. Okay? So let's pick a pair of factors of 8. Um, possible factors would be 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Right? So let's use 2 and 4. Let's suppose this is 2 and this is 4. Now remember, this is trial and error. So you're going to try a lot and you're going to make some errors. But with the FOIL process, you'll be able to determine if you got the right answer. So let's go ahead and FOIL this out. The product of our first two terms is 3x squared. Outside terms is 6x. Inside term is 4x, and last is 2. Notice when I combine those middle terms, I do not get what I'm looking for, right? Whoops, that's supposed to be an 8, isn't it? 2 times 4 is 8. So the first term, the last term are good, but the middle term doesn't match. That means I made an error. Now, don't erase your work. Put a line through it so you'll remember you've already tried that combination, and try a new combination. 
let's just switch our last two spots. Now, I don't want to change my first two terms. They're working out nicely to give us 3x squared. I don't want to change the signs. I'm just going to switch these two guys around. And also keep in mind, we could try in those last two spots, 1 and 8, or 8 and 1. We've got a lot of possible combinations to try. So let's foil it out and see what happens. Multiplying our first two terms together, we get 3x squared. Outside terms, we get 12x. Inside terms, we get 2x. And last, we get 8. Notice this time when we combine middle terms, we did match the original problem. So we have the correct factorization here. Sometimes it takes you three or four times to find the right combination, but develop that perseverance, keep trying it, and know that you can check it with FOIL to make sure that you've factored correctly. Please take this section very seriously and get as much practice as necessary and get some extra help if you need help factoring. We'll be using factoring quite a bit this semester. All right, thanks for listening and best of luck to you on your homework.